From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Ed's Meats and Grocery is much more than a grocery store. We carry a full line of quality meats, local and organic vegetables, and a large variety of fish, Green Mountain Smart Control pellet grills, and a full deli case of sandwiches and side dishes. Good morning, everyone. We've got a lot to talk about. This is going to be a long forecast. So before we get to that long forecast, let's just take a look at Kruger's Quick Cast so you can know what to expect as you're heading out the door today and what you can expect for the rest of the day today. All right, so heading out the door, another chilly or coolish start to the day. Temperatures low 60s in the valley by 8 o'clock. You know, I've got showers in here for the North Coast. If you see a stray sprinkle or a light shower this morning, don't be surprised. But overall, it's not going to be a wet day for all of us. It's not until late in the day that around Siskiyou County, northern end of the valley, could see a stray sprinkle or light shower. You'll see that here on Futurecast. So again, you see some of the stray sprinkles we could see for parts of the coast, even Trinity County, western Siskiyou County. But this is 6 o'clock today. This is when we start to see a few thunderstorms developing, especially in central Siskiyou County, but a few stray showers may make the way into the north end of the valley. Keep in mind, it's very dry out there. So a lot of this probably won't even reach the ground, but if you see a stray sprinkle late this afternoon, early this evening in Redding, maybe even Red Bluff, don't be surprised, but don't count on much. It's behind this that we've got the next system coming in. We'll dive into that a bit deeper here with our uh, future cast here a little bit later. Here's your forecast for today. Temperatures are starting to cool off. We're talking temperatures mid-80s, low to mid-80s here for the valley. Uh, 60s and 70s for the higher elevations and for the coast, mainly in the 60s. I've got the chance for thunderstorms here for northern Trinity County, excuse me, northern Shasta County, and especially central Siskiyou County. East and west, probably slimmer chances, but the chances are there nonetheless. Let's take a look at your seven-day outlook. And again, this uh, whole story to talk about with the morning, when all the timing of all this is. So stick around for the more detailed forecast after this series of seven-day forecasts so you get a better idea of what to expect. But bottom line, chances for rain off and on today, Friday, and Saturday, and then it dries out on Sunday, warming up back in the possibly the triple digits for the valley by uh, early next week. But of course, for Mount Shasta, El Turris, and Susanville, not quite the triple digits, but 80s, maybe some 90s in there as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our headlines. And this is now the deep dive forecast. Get ready for some details here so you really know what to expect over the next few days. Highs will stay below normal for the rest of the week. We've been spoiled all last week, all this week, below normal. But triple digits may return by the beginning of next week. But we'll get into that in a second. Cooler with rain, thunderstorms, Friday and Saturday. I think Friday is the main event, really Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Saturday, a few lingering showers in the morning. And then by the afternoon, most of it's gone. Snow as low as 7,000 feet. Yeah, can you believe that? I mean, it's not going to be a ton of snow. You're not going to get your snowboards out and snowboarding on those highest peaks. But down to 7,000 feet, you could see an inch of snow possibly. Triple digits, though are expected to return to the valley by early next week. Not a major heat wave, just some, uh, some heat heading our way. Here's the latest on the fires as of last night. Keep in mind, these numbers do change in the morning hours, uh, but so far the acreage has gone up a little bit here, close to 60% containment as of last night. We take you out to the Boise fire. We're seeing better containment here as well at 16%. The number has gone up. It's getting closer to 13,000 acres, but it's a slow growth. And I got to tell you, with the rain that we're going to see over the Boise fire over the week or over Friday, I tell you what, it's going to be a decent amount of rain. It's going to really help things out. Now, we're talking about all this rain, but we're not going to see a ton of rain for Modoc County and Lassen County really until Friday night. So today, elevated fire risk because the winds are picking up with this system. Tomorrow, even Friday, we still have that elevated risk because the rain really won't arrive from Modoc and Lassen County late in the day, Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning. So we still got to watch for that potential for gusty winds, low humidity. As a result, a red flag warning for today into tonight for those gusty winds and low humidity. 
So yes, there are just so many elements and so many things to talk about. So let's continue that fire danger outlook here. You see how the winds are really picking up here today. I mean, we've really got those gusts 30, 40 miles per hour, even in the valley. Not as bad off to the west, but the winds are picking up even uh, to the west of the valley. Now, as we go into Friday, the winds are mainly going to be caused from the main area of low pressure, but also some of the thunderstorms that may develop here as well. And then as we go into your Saturday, overall, the wind should start to die down. Now, what does that mean for our humidity levels? Well, today we are going to notice an increase in our humidity levels. Why? Because temperatures are dropping and as the storm system approaches, there is some moisture associated with it. So we're going to see higher humidity levels even off to the east, but no rain, still fairly dry and fuels. Uh, well, you know, if a fire should start, it could spread rapidly under those gusty winds, especially to the east. Then we go into your Friday, still looking at some pretty good relative humidity levels because of course, at this point, the rain is pretty much moving through. So here's what I'm tracking. It says mainly Friday because that's when I think the main event will be, but it includes Friday and even into Saturday. Scattered showers, thunderstorms are expected. That's pretty much the story, but not everyone's gonna see those thunderstorms and not everyone's gonna see a ton of rain. Gusty south, southwest winds overall from the main area of low pressure that's approaching. But of course, gusty winds also associate with the thunderstorms when they develop. Periods of heavy rain, hail, and lightning. Now, I want you to go back to last weekend when some of you did experience some very heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and hail. We could see more of that in some new locations. Places that saw it on Saturday may not see it, but we could see more of that overall. And again, I was talking about, we're looking at uh, some snow down to as low as, well, this says 8,000, it should be more like 7,000, between seven and 8,000 feet is what we're looking at here. Is this gonna be a major snow event? Are we gonna have chain work? No, this is not a big deal, but once the storm passes, we might have a beautiful sight for some of those higher mountain peaks to see a little dusting of snow. Should be nice, should be beautiful actually. All right, so here's the area of low pressure. This is a tightly wound area of low pressure. This is a fairly strong low area of low pressure at least for this time of the year. It's got the colder air associated with it. You see the speckled clouds? That's the cold air coming in from the Gulf of Alaska. This is the cloud cover mainly off to the north of us, but this is the approaching storm system. All right, so with all of that, let's talk about the flash flood watch. You may have been hearing about it. It's been probably all over social media. So what does this mean? And I'm, I'm going to put this in better perspective for us. First and foremost, what the National Weather Service is doing with this flash flood watch is just a precaution. Should some of that heavy rainfall move over the Park Fire Burn Scar area, you're talking about mudslides and debris flows, a very good possibility. Okay. On top of that, just some localized flash flooding in some areas. I think even outside, you know, we could see some flash flooding uh, in, in areas that do get caught under some of these stronger thunderstorms. Now that's mainly for Friday into Saturday. All right, here's the severe outlook. Now, we, usually we look for these shades of green. We're not seeing that for today, but tomorrow you see how it's becoming a little bit more widespread. Now, here's the thing you'll notice redding, red bluff, Chico, not part of it. So this is mainly for the first half of the storm. And then as we go into Friday evening, Friday night, that'll push eastward. And then by the time we get into Saturday, most of the activity will actually be in Modoc County and in Lassen County. But that's gonna be a Friday night, early Saturday morning event. And again, we'll get into the timing of all that right now with Futurecast, all right? So here's the latest forecast model that just came in. So what we're looking at here is the burn scar area, or burn, uh, of the fire, the, the Boise fire, and of course the park fire, right? So just those for points of reference when the rain starts to kind of kick in, all right? So here's this afternoon, 6 p.m. We're seeing thunderstorms developing along this line right here around central Siskiyou County, northern Shasta County, and around the Redding area as well. So could we see some showers late in the day today? Not out of the question. Could we see a straight thunderstorm? Not out of the question. Maybe even as far south as Red Bluff. South of that, it stays dry. Look at this, cloud-free still off into Modoc County and Lassen County. Stray sprinkles, light showers for the north coast, western Siskiyou County, and Trinity County. So through the day today, if you see a stray sprinkle or light shower in these areas, don't be surprised. But again, the main event hasn't arrived just yet. It's off to our north and west. So tonight, still some, uh, some strong thunderstorms possibly for central Siskiyou County, but dry elsewhere. Again, maybe a few stray sprinkles, light showers. 
Then we go into Friday morning, 6 a.m. There are the thunderstorms for mainly Del Norte County, but look at the showers, some light showers for uh, Humboldt County. We're seeing a few showers kind of here and there, but nothing major. This is where most of the instability is right now. This is where we're going to start to see those thunderstorms for Friday morning. Okay, even over the ocean. You see the flow around the main area of low pressure. So the center of the low is still to our north and it will stay to our north actually. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of areas of the south aren't going to see a ton of rain because the main area of low pressure is to the north of us and we're getting kind of caught in the flow on the southerly flow, or the, the south side of that low pressure. So this is all moving in this direction here. So you can see here for noon on Friday, now we're seeing mainly hitting Humboldt County. It's a few showers western Siskiyou, a few showers for northern Trinity. But look at the valley, not much going on. This is going to be a big waiting game, I think, for many of us in the valley in particular. Then by the afternoon hours, we start to see some development, uh, especially it, you can see a lot of it here. Heavy rainfall, gusty winds for northern Humboldt County, Del Norte County, Siskiyou County, uh, parts of Trinity County, excuse excuse me, Shasta County, and even into Tehama County, around Red Bluff, maybe even Corning, starting to get in some of that rain. But look at off to the east. Yeah, maybe a straight pop-up shower here or there, but for the most part, even Friday afternoon, not much going off here to the east. Keep in mind, here's the Boise fire. Look at all that rain over the Boise fire, but not much going on yet over the park fire. Keep in mind, the winds are picking up at this point too. Now, we go into 10 p.m. on Friday, this is where the bulk of the thunderstorms are now. We're beginning to see it just clipping Redding. But look at Red Bluff, Corning, Chico, not much. Now, Friday night, we're beginning to see more in Modoc County and, of course, plenty in Siskiyou County and, of course, for the North Coast and Trinity County as well. So that's Friday at 10 p.m. Let's take you into Saturday morning at 4 a.m. This is when we have the biggest concern for the flash flooding potential around the park fire because I think the north end of the fire could get caught up in some of that heavier rainfall. All right, so as you go into Highway 36, yeah, maybe some mudslides, maybe some debris flows uh, along that highway there because of this heavy rainfall that could be pushing through. I think the south end of the fire may be spared from some of that heavier rainfall. Meanwhile, we've got some heavy rainfall approaching and moving into uh, Lassen County, Modoc County, but things are quieting down behind it. So this is 4 a.m. on Saturday. So this is late Friday night, early Saturday morning. We go into 6 a.m. Now the heaviest rainfall is over Lassen County. Look at this. You're seeing some of that snow being picked up by future casts as well. Then by Saturday around 10 a.m., a lot of the rain is gone. And then through the day on Saturday, not only is the rain clearing out, but the clouds are beginning to dissipate on Saturday as well. So again, I think this is going to be mainly a Friday, Friday night event. And then on Saturday, things are starting to diminish. So what does this mean for our rainfall totals based on future cast? You can see the bulk of the rain. This is not Anything that's surprising after just seeing where most of the rain is going to be off to the north and west. But we could pick up over a quarter of an inch for parts of Modoc County, but not as much for Lassen, Plumas, Chico. I just don't think you're going to see a ton of rainfall out of this. And I think parts of Redding may see more than 15 hundredths. But you get the idea, the bulk of the rain here. You get caught under a thunderstorm here in Redding, you're going to see a lot more than 15 hundredths of an inch of rainfall. Again, it just depends on where you are. But this is just kind of a general sense. We could see anywhere from just a few hundredths to possibly over an inch of rain for parts of NorCal. It's going to be one of those situations. And that's what happened with Saturday's storm system. Some people didn't see a drop of rain. Others saw over three quarters of an inch of rainfall. So again, it just depends on where you are. Area of low pressure, that's the cooler air. This has got cooler air, wind, and of course the, the showers and thunderstorms I just showed you. By tomorrow, you see where the center of the low is? It's actually to our north. That's why if we were to push this a little bit more to the south, that Sacramento would get caught in that rain. But that's not going to happen. Because what happens is we go into Saturday, it actually pushes back up to the northeast. And now it's pretty much gone by Saturday afternoon. Things are warming back up by Sunday. Right There's that area of high pressure here. That will then build northwestward, but we're seeing temperatures increase. And this is when the heat begins to kick back in. Upper 90s to about 100 degrees here. And then that area of high pressure will kind of push on through toward the middle and latter part of next week. So we're going to fall-like, which is what we'll see the next few days with those cooler temperatures, then back to summer with highs well into the 90s. There's your 10-day trend for Redding, down into the 70s for Friday, Saturday. And then there you can see it 
upper 90s, about 100 degrees. Around normal for this time of the year. Nothing unusual for us temperature-wise as we go through next week. So yes, hunker down because it's going to heat back up again. Here's your wave heights as we go into your Thursday and end your Friday. So the storm system as it approaches, those wave heights are going to increase. But as of right now, there are no um, advisories uh, for uh, the uh, marine forecast here. Just, of course, that chance for rain with those south winds at about five knots. All right, here's your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. I'm not going to go into the timing that you see here, but now you know the full story when you're looking at that seven-day forecast. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 70s, maybe a stray sprinkle or light shower through the day today. That's also the coast for the north, also the case that is for the north coast. 66 for Blue Lake, 74 degrees in Honeydew. We take you up north with 69 for Gas Key, Smith River about 64, Orleans 74. So you'll notice it is going to be cooler out there today and even cooler by your Friday. 73 for a high today in Ashland for our neighbors to the, in Southern Oregon. 78 degrees in Happy Camp. And there you can see Tennant, a high of about 69 degrees. Let's take you off into Modoc County. You're dry today. You're dry through most of the day tomorrow. It's tomorrow night into Saturday that you've got that rain and even so some thunderstorms in the forecast. You're dry today in the Eastern Mountains now. Again, places like, excuse me, Bernie, uh, Shingletown, Viola, you may see a stray sprinkler, light shower, or even an off chance for a thunderstorm late this afternoon, early evening. But otherwise, you're fairly dry. Uh, and then, of course, maybe some showers, thunderstorms late for Susanville. Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, it's gone, and then it dries out and warms up for next week. Here's your Valley Neighborhood Forecast of the South. Corning southward, I think you'll be dry today. Uh, I just don't think it's going to happen for you today. Uh, late in the day Friday, maybe Chico seeing some showers. I don't anticipate much in the way of shower or thunderstorm activity for you, but something worth watching because you're kind of on that borderline, right? And then maybe a chance for a morning sprinkler or light shower, otherwise dry for Saturday, and then it heats back up towards the middle and towards the next week, early next week. Uh, 84 degrees for a high today in Reading. Uh, yes, an afternoon shower, maybe a late afternoon shower or thunderstorm for Reading, Anderson, Cutwood, maybe as far south as Red Bluff. Don't count on it, mainly dry today. It's a waiting game today. And there you can see about 83, 83 for Lakehead. You could see some shower and thunderstorm activity late today. Not to mention Whiskey Town and Bella Vista maybe as well. So here's your 7 day outlook for Reading. Again, we talked about that timing. Now, I do think that there could still be a stray sprinkle or light shower Saturday morning, but by Saturday afternoon, really even before noon, it's gone completely. Clouds are clearing out Saturday afternoon. It's warming back up, especially by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with highs in the upper 90s to about 100 degrees. We're the locals down the street. The neighbor you come to for advice. A nest egg for the golden years a loan or a new account for that growing business. What started in Chico 50 years ago has taken us all around California, providing big bank lending power and high tech service while keeping our relationships personal. We're still the locals down the street, no matter where your street might be. Tri-Counties Bank, California's local bank.